Well, as we begin a new week, new numbers have come out nationwide and here at home also about the coronavirus. Yeah, Matt's live with why today's numbers are especially important. Hey, Matt. Good morning to you. Three Indiana counties have more than a thousand COVID-19 cases. They are Hendricks and Hamilton, along with Marion County. And speaking of Marion County, that's where non-essential stores opened this weekend. On Friday, malls across the area reopened. And the big question now, could that have an impact on the numbers we expect here at the State House later today? Well, here's what we know about those numbers so far right now here in Indiana. With everything we're hearing, there are nearly 28,000 cases since March when the first coronavirus cases were reported through this weekend, you can see we seemed to have hit our peak of those new cases back in late April. Health leaders say that social distancing and shutdowns worked to avoid those numbers from soaring even higher. Now, when it comes to deaths from COVID-19, there have been more than 1,600 here in our state. We're learning that by age, 50 to 59-year-olds, closely followed by 40 to 49-year-olds, seem to be hit the hardest. Those over 70 and especially over 80 seem to have the highest death rate here in our state. Now, today we'll be getting the latest numbers here from Indiana officials and learn what the reopening on Friday and last Last week may have on those numbers and what we can expect for future reopenings that are coming up here as Indiana hopes to get completely back to normal by mid-July. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Here at 505, let's take a look at some of the top coronavirus headlines starting here in Indy. Several of the Indianapolis Public Library branches will open the first time for the first time in weeks today, but it's going to be curbside service only. The buildings will still be closed to the public. This is their first step in the reopening process. They're still waiving all fines and late fees. And after closing stores and stopping online orders in late March, TJ Maxx announced its websites are back up and running, but they will limit how many orders they accept per day. The stores are still prepping for customers to return to the store, but you will have to wear a mask. And check this out. British researchers right now are testing a dog's ability to sniff out whether people are infected with COVID-19 before showing any symptoms. Bless you. The goal is to develop a fast, non-invasive way of detecting the disease. And listen to this. Dogs have been able to know or been able to detect the virus at the equivalent dilution of a teaspoon of sugar in two Olympic-sized swimming pools. So that's pretty impressive, that basically. Impressive. All right. An Indianapolis barber says he will not reopen his doors today after saying that he planned to defy the Marion County orders for non-essential businesses to stay closed until June. Meredith is following this story for us this morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Julia. Yeah, so Jason Hicks is a barber here in Marion County. And originally he said he was going to defy those orders, but now he says he has reconsidered. And we're hearing from a lot of you guys on social media, 257 comments overnight on this. So let's give you a little bit more context. Governor Holcomb has opened up a lot of things in the state of Indiana. So in surrounding counties, personal care businesses like hair and nail salons are open. But Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett said, wait, Marion County is a hot spot for COVID-19, I don't think we're ready yet to have these businesses open. So he said in Marion County, these personal care businesses cannot open until June 1st. But Jason Hicks, the barber who we just showed you said, I have kids to feed and I have clients who need to get their hair cut. I'm gonna open on Monday. We reported this over the weekend. And now he says he's actually reconsidered after receiving a call from local authorities telling him that opening could risk his business and his barber's license. Now he is saying he will wait until June 1st. So here's some of the comments we're getting on social media. Josh was saying he stood up, he stood up for what he believed in, and I completely respect that. At the end of the day, he did what was best for his family, and I applaud that others should as well. Joey Ann saying, meanwhile, everyone in Marion County is just going outside their county to get their hair cut. And Cody saying 200 people can go in a Walmart, but a few people can't go get their hair cut at a barber shop. We want to hear from you. What do you think? Do you think, hey, I get it. I get what the mayor is trying to do for Marion County. Or are you saying, isn't everyone in Marion County just going to leave their county to get their hair cut and that business is going to be lost? We want to let, let us know. This is our hashtag 13 Sunrise. Julia. Uh, that, and, and it is just unreal for all of these smaller businesses, Meredith. So you certainly feel for them. Thank you. Well, music venues were some of the first businesses to close and now some of the last to open. Josh Baker owns the music venue Hi-Fi and he helped form a group called the Indiana Independent Venue Alliance with 35 members from across the state. That's where the idea for a two-hour virtual benefit called Till We Meet Again came from. The goal is to raise money for independent venues struggling. So we're talking about staring at the edge of the cliff right now. 
and helping people. Um, you know, I'd say there's probably three or four members in our organization that fall under that category. Baker says of the 1,600 venues nationally in the group, 25% have less than two weeks left before officially shutting down. To get involved or to donate to the cause, we've posted a link on our website for you at WTHR.com. All right, 509, uh, Chuck.